The largest animal to ever walk the surface of the Earth during the early Jurassic wasn't located in prehistoric North America or Asia, not even Europe. It was discovered in Africa, to be specific, in what is today the Free State Province of South Africa. This is Leduma Hadi Mafube, its name meaning a giant thunderclap at dawn in the Sesotho language. And honestly, with a creature this massive, it's hard to imagine a better name. Leduma Hadi Mafubi wasn't your typical long-necked titan like Brachiosaurus or Diplodocus. It came much earlier, one of the bold, early pioneers of gigantism, a giant sauropodomorph that paved the way for the true sauropod behemoths that would one day rule the planet. It lived during the early Jurassic period, about 200 million years ago, a time when the world was still recovering from the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event that wiped out many dominant species. Dinosaurs were just beginning their reign, but this guy was already rewriting the rules of what a land animal could be. Back then, Africa wasn't a separate continent as we know it today. It was still stitched into the colossal supercontinent Pangaea, a sprawling landmass that connected what are now South America, Africa, Antarctica, India, and Australia. The landscape was a mix of lush forests, river valleys, and fern prairies, teeming with early dinosaurs, amphibians, and primitive reptiles. In this vibrant yet evolving ecosystem, Ladumahadi reigned supreme as the largest animal to ever walk the land. But just how big was this so-called thunderclap? Ladumahadi weighed in at an estimated 12 metric tons, roughly twice the weight of a modern African elephant, which is already the heaviest land animal alive today. And while it wasn't the longest dinosaur ever, it still stretched a formidable 9 meters, around 30 feet, from nose to tail. To put that into perspective, if you parked two large SUVs end to end, you'd still be just about matching Litamahadi's length. Its body was built like a tank, stocky, muscular, and powerful. But unlike the later, more famous sauropods with fully vertical, column-like legs, Litamahadi's limbs were slightly bent. By all measures, Litamahadi was a trailblazer. At a time when most land animals were no bigger than a large dog, this dinosaur decided to shatter all limits. It wasn't just big for its era, it was the biggest land animal the Earth had ever seen up to that point. And it set the stage for an entire dynasty of sauropod giants that would dominate the continents for millions of years afterward. And that's not even the craziest part. When scientists uncovered the bones of Ledimahadi Mafube in 2012, they weren't just looking at another large dinosaur. They had found something that challenged old ideas about how dinosaurs became giants. At first glance, it looked like your typical long-necked plant eater, but when they took a closer look, it revealed something entirely different. Ladumahadi wasn't following the average sauropod blueprint. While later sauropods like Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus developed tall, straight, pillar-like legs to support their massive weight, Ladumahadi did something different. Its limbs were incredibly thick and powerful, shaped more like massive living tree trunks than elegant columns. Not only that, but its legs weren't locked perfectly straight. They had a slight bend, offering a different kind of strength and flexibility. This revealed something crucial. The path to becoming gigantic wasn't a simple one-way road as most people thought. Evolution had tried multiple designs. Different species came up with completely different solutions to the same problem. How do you carry over 12 tons of living weight across solid ground? In Leda Mahadi's case, the answer was brute strength. Thicker bones, more muscle. A design built for raw power, not just vertical support. At this point, nature was basically throwing ideas at the wall, experimenting with how to build prehistoric titans, and Leda Mahadi was one of the boldest experiments of them all. But that was only the beginning, because hidden inside its bones was the real story. Microscopic analysis revealed that Leduma Hadi had a mixture of traits, some features typical of earlier, smaller dinosaurs, and others found in the giant sauropods that came later. It was a true transitional form, a living snapshot of evolution caught between two stages. Another major breakthrough came from studying its posture. Using a new method developed for this particular research, scientists confirmed that Leduma Hadi walked firmly on all fours, unlike many of its closest relatives like Platyosaurus and Ankhosaurus, who still walked on two legs. This pushed back the timeline for when quadrupedal walking evolved and revealed that it happened way earlier 
and more often than anyone had realized. Ladumahadi wasn't just rewriting the rules of evolution, it was doing it in one of the most unexpected places on Earth, Africa. 200 million years ago, what is now the mountainous region of Clarence, South Africa, was a flat, semi-arid landscape crisscrossed by shallow streams. It was a place where giant plant eaters like Ledumahadi, Massospondylus, and Ardonyx roamed alongside massive meat eaters like the early Megatheropods, large predatory dinosaurs that may have preyed on them. Understanding this forgotten world isn't just fascinating, it's crucial to piecing together how dinosaurs lived, moved, and conquered the highly unpredictable ecosystems of their time. On a global scale, Ledumahadi proves that the supercontinent Pangaea was still whole at the time, because its closest relatives weren't just found in Africa, they also appeared in places like Argentina. These distant fossils match up like puzzle pieces, showing that back then, there were no vast oceans separating continents. Dinosaurs could have roamed freely across massive stretches of land, migrating from what is now Southern Africa straight into South America without ever getting wet. But building a giant was one thing, surviving as one was another. Ledumahadi Mafube wasn't just a marvel of size as you would like to think. It was a bold evolutionary experiment, tackling challenges no animal had faced before. So how did a creature like Ledumahadi function in a world not yet built for giants? The answer lies in a combination of strength, speed, and its strange anatomy. Ledumahadi walked on all fours, but not the way you might expect. By slicing into Ledumahadi's fossilized bones and studying the microscopic structure, scientists discovered that it grew at an extremely fast pace, unbelievably fast for something that size. Unlike cold-blooded reptiles that grow slowly, Ladumahadi showed growth patterns more similar to birds and mammals, fast, relentless, and efficient. This rapid growth would have been essential. In a dangerous world filled with hungry predators, getting big quickly could mean the difference between survival and extinction. Which leads to a much bigger, wilder question. Was Ledumahadi warm-blooded? Some paleontologists think so, or at least something close. Ledumahadi may have had a higher metabolism than modern reptiles, allowing it to grow rapidly, stay active, and dominate its environment, even in cooler conditions. It wasn't fully warm-blooded like a bird, but not sluggish like a lizard either. Something in between, a Jurassic powerhouse burning energy faster than anything of its size had ever achieved. In a dangerous world like this, the faster you grew, the faster you became too big to mess with. And of course, surviving as a massive, fast-growing giant wasn't just about internal systems. It also meant finding enough food, space, and safety in a world still adjusting to its first true giants. Ledumahadi lived in a world very different from today's Africa. The Free State region of South Africa was then a semi-arid landscape, crisscrossed by rivers and dotted with ferns and low-lying vegetation. Here, Ledumahadi likely spent much of its time grazing. In this kind of environment, Ledumahadi would have been like a bulldozer, shaping the environment simply by its size, much like elephants do today. And once it reached its full 12-ton size, it probably had few if any natural predators. While Ledumahadi dominated this prehistoric world, its fossil would later thunder through the scientific world, reshaping how we understand the rise of giants and putting Africa firmly on the dinosaur map. Kindly like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'm DM, See you in the next one.